Hi there, welcome to this UE5 tutorial. Uh, this tutorial covers adding Niagara effects to skeletal meshes and static meshes. And these are effects which are added to the surface um, of the actual meshes themselves. So, to get started, I've created two actors already. Uh, here's what I made earlier. One is a static mesh. And I've just added some rotating movement to this as well and uh, I just set up a quick event very very simple just to add a little bit of random rotating movement to the mesh itself and then we have a skeletal mesh which is just using an animation asset just to give it a little bit of movement and we have got a timeline set up in here as well again which is just moving moving the component around we're not going to cover that just yet and these are just sitting in a root, so we have a skeletal mesh just sitting on a root and a static mesh sitting on the root. Cool, uh, and that's press play. This is literally all we've got at the moment. So we've got a little bit of movement um, just to sort of show off our effects. And this is a good thing to do if you're using effects. Um, so as you can see, or as you may have seen already, we've just got an aggro particle just sitting on both of these so it's actually attached to uh, the parent which is what Niagara likes these days so if you have uh, an effect that's attached to the parent and you set either a, stat a static mesh or a skeletal mesh location that, that's the default so we can start off either with an empty emitter but I'm going to use a fountain um, just because it's, it's slightly easier, you don't have to worry too much about it. You can also use an omnidirectional burst, that's a, a good option for these types. But I'll start off with a fountain just for the purposes of testing, and we'll call this Skeletal Mesh FX. Great! Now we have a fountain, and this is just spawning on the shape. Um, and you know, this, this can be fine for a lot of different things but it's not really the effect that we're looking for right now. We want those uh, particles instead of spawning in just one particular location and shooting from the velocity, we want them to actually um, spawn on the skin itself. So we'll take out the velocity and we'll take out the shape. Cool. We're just going to turn off the gravity force as well. Um, drag we will leave on. That's fine. Scale color, that's fine. We'll come back to that. Cool. So on the particle spawn, we want to look up a uh, skeletal mesh location. Now we'll ask for a preview mesh. So if you want to go over to your mesh. That's it. And jump down. We'll just add that in. That's a preview. And as you can see, we're actually adding it directly to bones. That's the default. We'll just bump up the spawn amount here. Just uh, again testing can sort of see what's going on then we come down to the skeletal mesh location come down to bones and we want to change this to triangles on the surface now we can see that uh, it's all spawning in one point which means that we don't actually have access to the triangles so if we go into the mesh itself and we look up cpu and allow cpu access that give us access to the locations, location data that's actually on the mesh itself. Cool, looks good. So now we have some particles which are spawning at the locations of those particular meshes. And obviously, as they move, um, the location moves as well. Very cool, and that's the basis of this system. Um, there is actually a CPU access fix now button, but it doesn't always work, so it's worth uh, just knowing that you can go back and do it manually. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do just bump up the drag a little bit. And this just means that it'll get stuck in place wherever it lands rather than pulling back the, the velocity. And we'll add a curve to the spawn rate as well because we want to produce lots of uh, particles at the start of the movement and then fewer at the end. And this is quite good with uh, movement and stuff like that. Um, it's uh, it's always nice to add curves and also uh, make sure those curves are auto shaped as well. 
we're going to change the size slightly the effect that we want is that it's going to start off um, at 0 and then up to 0 0.2 seconds where it's going to go up to 1 and at the end it's going to go back to 0 again so it's going to add a key so at the start it's at 0 and again uh, select more go up to auto it makes it look a little bit nicer so you now see we've got them sort of popping into uh, into existence which is really nice this gives that slightly magical effect that's what we're looking for um, at the moment it's kind of hard to see them they're uh, on a, a white background as well so we're just going to go in I'm going to update the colour and we'll make this ones blue and turn down the the channels just very slightly we're not scaling those ones up just scaling up blue now you can see on this particular mesh uh, these particles aren't actually very big so I'm just going to increase their size let's bump up the curve as well so when it goes to one it's actually uh, going up much higher so that would be one times the, the curve value right that's cool it's a little bit more visible I'm just going to beef up this drag a little bit more in fact we'll add a curve to the drag so we get a lot more drag at the start and at the end uh, we get a lot less uh, the reason for doing this is because we're going to add some effects to it a little bit later on and that will help us out and just on the gravity force which is going to add a little bit of that as well so as the uh, drag disappears the gravity force will kick in also add some curl noise force as well just to give it a little point of difference and so we got a little bit of movement going on Still a little bit stuck to the, uh, to the mesh for my liking. So let's go back in, just beef that up a little bit. Increase the noise strength to 500, and the gravity force will bump that up to 350 as so. well. Cool, so as the, uh, the drag disappears, we're just getting a little bit more movement. Nice effect. It's, uh, it's quite a magical effect, that one. Very nice. So, one thing to demonstrate here is we just create the timeline going from 1 and then back to 0 uh, with a component move. Um, so, the one thing to say about this effect is the reason that you do it and the use case for it is to show. Uh, the location as it moves through a particular area so you might want to put this onto asteroids and things like that bits of debris which are sort of falling off and um, we'll just increase our drag uh, so it's more at the start so again more sticky to the actual mesh itself um, we'll just increase the, the movement just so it's a little bit more visible here but the, yeah the reason for doing it is you, you might want to use a trail particle you, you, these tend, these types of things tend to work alongside a trail particle. Uh, so these are more for like ash type particles and, and things like that. Especially if you're using them in uh, as a spawn rate. So what we're going to do now, rather than just worrying about them uh, spawning, we're going to switch them so that we actually get a burst. Uh, burst is quite a nice effect to use with uh, skeletal mesh um, and things like. Um, you know, dashes, uh, blinks, all that that kind of stuff. And it means that you sort of leave a bit of like an after image uh, where you were before. So taking all that location data, placing that location data down so that when you move, it's still there, basically. Very, very cool effect. So at the moment we don't have it on a big loop. And things like this you might want to time with uh, an, uh, an action. So say you do an attack, then you can do a flurry off that skill to measure off your weapon, or if it's a special attack, it's going to increase the uh, increase the loop time to 0.5. Again, yes, yeah, a very very cool effect. So it's it's such an easy thing to do. One point to note as well is because you're using on uh, the attached parent, as long as you've got CPU access on any mesh, then you can use it across a whole bunch of different actors. So. 
again super simple effect very very easy to implement great okay so now we're going to move on to the static mesh static mesh is uh, the same in, in the sense of the system itself is relatively the same we don't really need to change that too much um, the difference oh before i cover that so say for instance as a use case you want to um, show a different uh, skeletal mesh on your actual system let's say for instance you're morphing into a different skeletal mesh and that's very easy to achieve you just grab the system uh, set the skeletal mesh um, and then obviously you'd have to have a different skeletal mesh so you could have this in a variable or you could uh, just add it onto the character itself plug that into the skeletal mesh and then you'd need to activate it as and when you want to. But just, so yeah, you can either spawn it, but if it's already there, then that's fine. Activate it, and make sure you put that after you've set the skeleton mesh component. Very cool. Um, also the reset tick on the actual activate, that's quite important, especially if you're doing just a once node. Um, because if you try and call it again it doesn't reset and it won't actually uh, recall just something to keep in mind so um, that's a, a use case for um, a skeletal mesh where you might want a different uh, different effect I did actually just add some noise effect there as well, just increase the, the noise effect just because I think uh, the, the curl noise force actually just looks quite good difference we're going to take it back to the attached parent rather than the sort of setting we get that more kind of dissipate effect rather than the stuck effect it depends what you're looking for I think you know the, the stuck effect rather than the sort of moving effect um, could definitely be more valid so just on the static mesh again we're just going to add this to the static mesh itself um, the only difference between these two really um, so we're going to switch back to the spawn rate rather than spawn burst and take, it. take out the skeletal mesh location add in uh, so if you type in static mesh you'll see two we've got the sample static mesh and the static mesh location you have the static mesh location first then it will give you uh, I'll show an error and then you can just press the fix issue and it will give you the other one as well you need to add both of these basically um, so the default for this will be to use the default mesh so rather than the skeletal mesh where it will tend to default to the attached parent unless you're choosing to use the source with this static mesh it will use the default mesh so um, you want to switch to the attached parent if that's the approach you want to use um, I've already set this up to use uh, to, for the CPU access again same deal um, but once you put it into the attached parent you don't actually need to put in a preview mesh uh, or a default mesh um, I think in this particular case we will uh, turn the preview mesh in a second but for right now just showing let's do the exact same thing very cool so with the increase uh, with the scale size we're just going to but it's 0.01 so it's gaining a lot quicker a lot faster and then we pull down a lot quicker as well uh, and that gives the impression of much more movement much more quickly we can set the lifetime to be a little bit longer as well so we get more of that trail effect and just increase the amount of drag too so it's there and uh, it's still there while it's scaling down basically yeah much nicer effect So we're just going to set the preview mesh just so we can see it in this window. And 
we'll do the scale as bright size by speed as well. So again, there's an added small effect and the faster it goes, she has to scale it up very slightly. Cool. And good. Uh, again with the spawn rate, we're just going to push this a little bit higher as well. And we're going to bring that down a lot more quickly. So one thing I do want to change on this particular one, I don't think circles work particularly well, they don't necessarily convey speed or, or anything else. So I'm just going to copy this default spark material and put it into my folder. And if we can go in, all, all we're really doing is just adding um, a sphere mask onto the particle color. So I'm just going to take out the sphere mask itself. side and then check out my textures I believe I do actually have yep here we go a triangle texture which could work quite well just gonna take the alpha out of that plug that straight into opacity save that okay here's our default spark material I'm just going to pop that into static mesh. Great, so now we've got some triangles forming on it instead. Cool, that looks much better. Much more interesting, visually interesting. I think for skeletal meshes, circles tend to work fine, but for the particular one that we're looking for. So again, we, I'm just going to switch over to uh, red this time, to scale on the red and on my initialized particle just add that as a little bit red as well just to make it a little bit more visible again a little bit more interesting we're talking about damage so red seems to make sense that's good i'm just going to move this mesh up very very slightly just so we can get a better view of it perfect so now we have an effect which is a, a best instantaneous effect for our skeletal meshes and a spawn effect mesh or uh, effect for our static meshes. So re really, really good. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, see you soon. Bye.